Welcome to this look at new mods on Farming Simulator 19 with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's Monday the 24th of August. We have new mods. We have uh, three updates, I think it is. The updates are as follows. From the bottom left, we have got an update to the Sosnovka Chicken Pen by Adub Modding. Up to the top, the Class Action 900 by Smetty and the John Deere 8R US series by Custom Modding have all had updates today. Strap yourselves in, ladies and gents. Remember this day. Look back in years to come and remember where you were, what you were doing, because during this video you are going to see the future of farming. You may find a hint of sarcasm in my voice there. You'll see. Anyway, let's get on with it. In front of us we've got this. This is the Lizard Z510. Uh, this is by Tom Sky and Pisa PL. These are wind rowers. Um, they're rear three-point link mounted and they sit slightly at an angle, like a rake mower. Rake mower? Rake wind rower. Um, we've got a three metre and a four metre. You'll find these under wind rowers. So we've got the Z5104, the Z5105, three meters and four meters these are only um they're not very much on the slot count if i recall if i can find them on my list which of course i can't three slots each for the first one of each um we've got the option to change the design color to anything on that palette like that for example main color anything on that palette like that for example the four meter is exactly the same with those options with regard to um, colour. Prices aren't too much, 1,900 if you have it with changing colours and stuff, 1,000 and again if you change the design it's 400 for each, it's not a huge amount of money. Um, and they rake, you hook them up and they rake. This one needs to open up, that flicks down and they will row up whatever it is you want, whether it's grass or straw swaths or whatever it is you've done, hay. Um, like nicely detailed, very fine detailing on the actual rake sections themselves, the discs. Um, there you go. So those are by Tom Sky and Pisa PL. Uh, moving on, we've got this. Um, this is the Swath Roller by Luca Modi. Now in the real world, the Swath Roller goes in the front of a tractor or whatever it is, and while you're bailing, um, sometimes the swaths are a bit too big, a bit fluffy, which is no bad thing for letting them dry, but when the tractor drives over you can catch swath underneath and it can drag underneath the tractor. So what that roller does, just squashes it down while the tractor goes over and then the baler can pick it up a bit easier. Um, in game you can do that if you want to, it makes no difference to the swath if you do that, but this can also be used as a leveller. Um, weirdly, <laughs> I went looking under baling technology, why would I have done that, thinking because it was a swath a flattener, flattener sort of thing, but it was actually under levelers this one because it can be used as a leveler as well. Um, this was three slots and there are no options available. You get it in the blue, so you can put it on the front if you want to roll over swaths or you can use it as a bunker silo silage leveler for your chaff or whatever it is you put into your bunker silo. Um, that's by Luca Modding. Um, yeah, not much else to say about that one. Moving on, we've got this. This is the Lizard Silage Adjustment. This is by Sloitjes Modding. Um, this is also a kind of leveller. Um, well, I mean, yeah, in a sense it's a leveller. That's what it does. Um, hooks onto a front loader tool. Again, I thought, stupidly, I'll go looking for this in levellers. No, nope, this was under front loader tools. It's a fair size as well, actually. Um, but what we can do... Just hook it up and we've got a nice little rotation of the front loader tool so if you are coming to level a bunker silo or shove stuff in from the front and get it into the silo it's yeah nice looking tool um does what it should do again there's not really a lot else to say with that um that one is fairly adjustable as well the swath roll you can adjust it up and down and side to side kind of in and out but anyway uh this you will find Again, not where you would think. I think this one was under miss... No, it wasn't. This was under front loaders. I just said that, didn't I? There we go. 3,500 by 3 metre width on that. Um, levelers are used to move chaff and silage and level the heaps in the silos. Um, three slots. 
by um, Sluches Mudding. Uh, moving on, I think we're out onto the open ground now. Also by Sluches Mudding, we've got the Cortiva Gallon Fertiliser and Herbicide 20 litre containers. These are like the seed bags, the individual seed bags, those kind of things. These are 20 litre containers for herbicide or fertiliser. Um, the beauty with these is if you've got a small machine or if you want to go a bit more kind of realistic, you can go down and grab these. I say realistic, it depends how you want to look at it. Drop in your pickup or trailer, whatever you want, and then you can top up. But like I say they're only 20 litres, so if you were going to be filling up a large ish tank, that's going to take a long time. But there, you know, it's another addition to the game. These you'll find under objects, under big bags, I think they were. There you go. So for the fertiliser for 20 litres it's 105, for the herbicide 20 litres is 125. Um, I haven't worked out the maths on that for scaling that up, what that's going to work out, at whether it's a fair price or not. Again there are so many mods available for buying fertiliser, herbicide, pallets and IBCs and buy anything silos and to try and do comparisons to all of them would be almost impossible but anyway they are there that's what they cost that's what they do you can pick them up manipulate them by hand and uh, fill up what you want to um, they're four slots each for the first one but then once they've been used I assume like most things like that they'll disappear like the IBCs and pallets and things like that um, next we have got this we had quite a few fence packs and stuff recently. This is the wooden fence. This is by Michal6920 and Tensbeck. Um, we get a fence section and we get a wooden post section. Again, I've said before, some of them are a bit thin. They're hard to position. These are fairly thick. So for lining things up to make a whole fence section or something like that wouldn't be too bad. Although they are fairly short sections. So if you were going to do a long bit of fence, that's going to take quite a while. Um... These are only one slot each anyway, so yeah, depends how many you want to go for. Uh, these you'll find under placeables. I think it was decoration. There we go, 50 for the fence section, 30 for the post, like I say, one slot each. Although when you look at them, they have got like the um, sort of maintenance cost, whatever you want to look at it, the the fee per day considering they're quite small sections I don't often look at that the cost per day on things like this but that's actually I suppose fairly high 10 and 8 per day per fence section hmm. uh, anyway they're nice details look like wooden fencing um, and that's by Mikhail at 6920 and Tensbeck uh, next up we've got the Fent Weight this is by STV modding, 1250 kilogram weight. Um, again, nicely detailed. You'll find this under weights. There you go. Uh, 1200 to buy. Uh, I think it's three slots for the first one of those. And we can change the main colour to anything on that palette to match up with whatever you want to. Uh, like so. Again, that's all there is to that one. It's a uh, weight. Um, moving on, I'm going to go to this one first because I'm going to need the tractor. Just suddenly realised. Um, we have got over here, these are the Valentini Ripper and Maxi Squallow. So we've got the Ripper 4500, 4500, and we've got the um, Maxi Squallow 4700. Um, that's a, a ripper plow. Um, that one is a power harrow. Um, now, you can hook these together because obviously in the real world what you would do is you would probably use the ripper, get down deep, take out the big clods, really turn the earth a little, I say not even necessarily turn the earth, but kind of cut a swath through a little bit. Um, and then the power harrow behind would come through, get rid of any clods, level out your seed bed and make it all very nice. In game, you realistically only need one or the other because you can seed directly on top of a ploughed state or you can seed on top of a cultivated state. But if you want to go for a more kind of realistic approach, you can hook these both together. But these do come today as separate mods in the mod hub. These are by SMI Modding Team. Now, obviously, that's only 4,000. That's 
4,500, that's 4.5 metres. That's a 4,700, that's 4.7. But I think because of the, the width apart that the kind of furrows in the ploughing create, you can get away with it together because when you go around the next turn, you're going to have a gap anyway. So I think that's why that kind of works. These are really nicely detailed as well. I don't often go in for power, power harrows, only for me personally, because I require a bit more horsepower to pull because they're powered and the actual blades are turned rather than just a manual pulling a spike or a roller or something through the ground. Um, but that's, again, that's just me personally, but very nicely detailed mods. Um, you will find the ripper under, was it plows or subsoilers? I think it was subsoilers. Yeah, uh, 15,000 to buy um, and that will use four slots you can change the main colour to any of those three. So you can go with an old green, old red, or the new green. Those are your choices. And then for the power harrow, it's under power harrows. 35,000 to buy. That's 11 slots. Because there's moving parts and various bits and bobs with that. Uh, we can change the main colour again to any of those three. And then on the back, we can have a rice roller, like that. We can have a cage roller, spiked roller, back to rice roller again. So what I'll do, if you just use the ripper, as you can see, I kind of gave it a little bit of a test, but um, we just drop it into the ground and we'll get a ploughed state. Like so. Now the thing with that is if it says you, it requires ploughing, that is a handy thing to have and a handy thing to use. But if you don't need to plough, you may need to cultivate if the seeds you've got doesn't have, it's not a direct drill when you need to cultivate a state. Either will work, you can plough or cultivate. We can hook this one up. Um, both do fold, I meant to show that, I'll show that in just a second because I'm not going to hook them both together. They do fold up for transport like so. Lights on it as well. Now this requires being turned on because it's a power harrow, but it does need to be unfolded first. Like so. Drop it down. And you get your cultivated state, like so. But here's the thing. If you run the ripper, that will run at 7 miles an hour. If you run the power harrow with the ripper, if you want to go for a more authentic, then it will only run at 5 because it's the power harrow, so you're kind of losing two miles an hour off the ripper. Um, like I say, I mean, that's for me personally, I wouldn't run them both, but that's just, that's just me. You may want to be going down a more realistic route. And so this does fold as well, the transport. But we can look them both together. I hire a worker now. That's actually going even slower with both of those attached. Well, we're getting a five out of that, just about. Three point link moving with the ground, but it gets the job done. Like so, and then we can disconnect one, disconnect the other, and use them independently, should we choose to do so. There we go. The Valentini Maxi Squallow 4700 and the Valentini Ripper 4500 by SMI Modding Team. Uh, next, we have got the Lizard RLP 400. This is a front mounted, now again, it looks like a cultivator, but this is actually a roller. I had trouble finding it, as I often do. Um, I like the fact that when it gets dropped down, you've got a block that goes under the front to stop it tipping forward. Um, this is by Nico Do 55 This is a four meter roller, I think it is. Now, where did I find this? Was it miscellaneous or was it weeders? I think it might have been miscellaneous. Just trying to think. No, nope, there, there we go. Um, so the ROP 400, 9,400 to buy, requires 120 horsepower, four meters wide. Um, it will use five slots. And the thing with this is, it can add fertilizing state to your field. So what you can do, if you've got a four meter seed or something behind you, we hook it up, turn it on, and then drop it down. And you'll see the ground gets darker as we go over free fertilizer I know it's only out to four meters but if you want free fertilizer 
you can just stick that on the front of a tractor, get that to run out over a field, let that go and get on with its job. Or you can put a cedar behind it and get your fertilising state and your seeding at the same time, or however you want to go about it. This is not a cultivator, it won't cultivate the ground. If I run this now over the ploughed bit of ground, it will do the same thing, we'll get the fertilising state, but you won't get a cultivating state with this, this is just a roller. In essence, I know it looks a little bit like a disc harrow, but... So drop it down and roll it over the um, ploughed section. We still get a darker patch of ground, so we are getting the fertilising state, but it's not cultivating or doing anything like that. So there you go. That's the Lizard RLP 400 by Nico Du 55. Uh, actually, that was a point I meant to show you. Sorry. Options available. It's standard in red, but we can have it standard like so, or you can have it with a scraper on the front. Um, again, uh, as far as I can tell, that is purely aesthetic. But what we can do is adjust that in or out, L1 and right stick up or down. I can adjust that scraper. Um, I haven't even right all the way out. It still doesn't cultivate that I noticed. I'll drop it down and go again. Yeah, we don't get a cultivating state. It's, it's more a kind of aesthetic thing um, from that point of view. Uh, right, so there we go. Uh, next up we have got... It's a bit of a kind of cultivator type day. Cultivators and rippers and stuff today. But we have got some other rather interesting stuff. This is the Lizard SD1. Uh, now this is the Lizard SD1 with harrows. There are two options available in this. Uh, this is by uh, Blend Art uh, Kolchosnik Jr. TT Check Modding and Agro Sketch. Uh, so a few people involved in this one. This is... I don't think it's a 3 metre, actually. It might only be a 2 point something. Uh, this is under tools and under... I'm sure this was cultivators. Yeah, there we go. The SD1 for 3,000, or the SD1 with harrows. Again, for all intents and purposes, I can't see any difference between the two. Uh, one's 500 more. Uh, these will use... How many slots were these? If I can find them. Four slots for the SD1, five slots for the SD1 with harrows. 2.7 metres, so not quite a three metre. These will run at nine miles per hour. Um, some cultivators run at ten, some a little bit faster, some a bit slower. It just depends. Options available, we can change the main colour to anything on that palette. Like so. Design, standard. Or with this one, you can have a bar roller. Um, with the other one, you've got the SD1 with harrows. Again, colour options, anything on that palette, but it does come with the harrows on the back. Like so. It's nice animation on though. You see them moving about like they're actually on the chains, you know. Drop that down. You get the cultivated state. Actually it would have been better if I'd actually done that on the ploughed section when it's against you see. Drop that down. 2.7 metres of cultivating. There you go. That's by Blend Art, Kolchosnik Jr., TT Check Modding, and Agro Sketch. Uh, moving on. We've got quite a few to get through today. Thinking about it now, let's get to this first, and then we'll do the next bit. Um, this is the New Holland TS series. Um, this is by ARM Team, I think. It is, yeah, New Holland TS series by ARM Team. Uh, a few options on this. We have two-wheel drive option, we can have a four-wheel drive option, a few different things going on. Nicely detailed. I think it goes up to a maximum of 125 horsepower. I think. Pretty nice. Um, it's fairly standard in so much as there's no doors or windows or anything like that open that I could tell. This you'll find under vehicles, small tractors. There we go. The TS series just there. Um, this will use 17 slots. Now we can have it as it is like that for 85 grand. 80 horsepower, all as it is. Um, we can have it no fenders, only front fender, only rear fender, both. We can have clean windows or tinted. Uh, we can have the TS90 at 80 horsepower and then the TS90 Fiat Agri. Each one of these has a Fiat Agri version as well in the kind of rust red. Uh, we've got the TS100, hang on a minute, yeah, 90 horsepower. 
and the Fiat Agri version. Then we've got the TS110 at 100 horsepower and Fiat Agri. The TS115 Turbo at 125 horsepower and the Fiat Agri version. Then we're back to the 80 horsepower. So from 80 horsepower to 125. We can have front loader attacher, yes or no. And then we've got standard two wheel drive. Two wheel drive with wheel weights, uh, wide tyres, wides and weights, uh, rear twins. And then we have communal. And then we're on to the four wheel drive version, what they consider standard, uh, with wheel weights, wides, widen weights, rear twins, narrows, communal, and then back to the two wheel drive. So a few different options on there for you to choose from. We'll jump in it. Sounds nice. We don't get that. We've had a few two wheel drive tractors, but we haven't had that many. I was thinking it's really strange having this, this small, you know tiny little wheels on the front but it's the two wheel drive option we've gone for horn lights cycle through beacons on top like I say inside there's no doors or windows that open I'll open the help win window just to show you uh, L1 R1 L1 and R1 um, no options for doors or windows as we cycle through the lights there's not anything that comes on a little bit on the side panel there And there you go. That's it. That's the uh, New Holland TS series by ARM team. Now, Hachi, we'll look at this next while I've got the tractor out. Um, just so I think, did I miss anything like that? I don't think I did. Front three point link is standard. Yeah. Right. Hop out. Next up, we've got this. Now, this does say in the mod hub um, it's a Camara or Camara. Uh, livestock trailer by Rowley Christie 1. Obviously it comes over to console and then it gets changed to lizard because of certain issues as you're probably aware of. Let me just get rid of that. Um, now, don't get caught out. This does say in the mods hub um, that it will take seven pigs, eight sheep, four cows, six horses and 63 chickens. You look at the pictures and think, finally! We did have a chicken transporting trailer a little while back, but apparently it was causing game crashes and all sorts of stuff. So you think, finally, we can transport chickens. No. Unfortunately, um, to be able to transport chickens, um, the map has to be configured and the GTX livestock trailer add-on mod must be used, which is PC only. So we've got the version on console. It will do seven pigs, eight sheep, four cows, six horses, but it won't do chickens, unfortunately. I kind of looked and thought, ah, oh, finally, sorted. It's a nice looking trailer, nice sturdy rear ramp on this as well, we'll show that in a second. A couple of options available on this. Um, yeah, it's, it's a nice trailer. I'm having one of those days, it's like you go around and think, okay, I'm, I'm not sure what else to say about this now, I've said all there is. Uh, beacon on top, L1 and X unfolds, nice smooth animation, ramp comes down, gates open, and you can load up. I want to next folds it away. Lights in the back as well. Indicators in those blocks too. Reverse. We got our reverse lights as well. We kind of expect that from a trailer, don't we? So there we go. That's the uh, Lizard Livestock Trailer by Rowley Christie. You will find this under uh, um, under tools, under animal transport. It's only nine thousand to buy. Um, it. Uh, 10 slots is all it takes 10 slots options available we can have lizard tires or we can have mitres those are the two options uh, and then on top we can have standard or with a beacon and that's it comes in that color there's no color options to choose from that's what you get so that's that moving on and i'm going to use the tractor for this we have got this looks a bit weird from the mod hub, but for me, I don't know. I say, I say, game changer. I know people argue the point, but for me, there are certain vehicles, certain tractors that I've steered away from in the past because when I've checked them out, especially when I do work at night, they can be kind of restrictive. You'll see what I mean in a minute. 
it looks a bit odd. This is the NMC warning weight. And when you first look, you think, okay, it's another weight. Fantastic. This is by North Modding Company. But this rail around the top is an attachable roof rack for whatever vehicle you're using. So here's the thing. It works in conjunction with the weight. So wherever you move it to is where it stays in position. Um, so you may need to adjust it if you're going to move the weight around from vehicle to vehicle. But if you've got a, any vehicle with a front three-point link, especially if you use the front lifter three-point link mod, you can then adapt a lot of different vehicles to have this roof bar. Now, you don't have to have it if you don't want to. Um, this you'll find... I'm going to say weights. <laughs> I'm sure it was weights. Or was it somewhere else? I think it was weights. There we go. 1,800. That's all. But you can have it main colour anything on that palette so for example case red if you want to go down that route design you can have standard with the extra strobe light just the strobe light so you can have the front weight and the strobe light or just the light rig so you don't have the strobe light if you don't want to have it so there's a few different options you can go like with you know all in like that just the strobe light or just the roof bar if you want to um the weight is 1,500 kilograms, so kind of, I suppose, mid-range as far as weights go. But for a tractor like this, and I suppose for any tractor really, that's my lights on, on the tractor. If I hook this weight up, and the weight's a bit heavy for this tractor, but you'll see what I mean in a minute. Um, if I open up the help window, like so, what I'm going to do now is move my weight. So L1 and my right stick lifts that up, so that's up and down, side to side, does that so what I'm going to do is bring it back a little bit until I get it kind of where I want it a bit of fiddling around a minute then L1 and R1 and then I can adjust it side to side or swing it up and down so I can get the angle I want just right so we'll get that about there to maybe to there again a little bit of fine tuning then my L1 and right stick again do that bring it up bring it down and like I say this is getting its direction it's where it needs to be from the front weight so it's a position relative to the front weight so when it's in a position like that i'm looking things all the way around that looks like it's pretty much attached okay so when i drive my tractor now because that's in relation to the weight it's fine that light bar stays where it is but the great thing about this is when you put the beacons on you've got your strobe so you can put that on any vehicle now which i think is fantastic but you, obviously you do have to have the weight what would be cool is just to have that separately but you need something to it needs to be tied into something in relation to something then we put our lights on look at that our new little TS-115 then that all of a sudden you can transform a fairly small tractor or any tractor where the lighting isn't that great into a bit of a monster I love that <laughs> I know it seems like a small thing but I, I, just, I really like it. As a mod goes, it's something so different. I haven't really come across anything like this before. But then we put all of our lights on, so on, then scroll through. I don't know. Don't know about you guys, but I love it. May not be for you, but I think the ability to add that lighting rig onto anything. Like I so say, you don't have to have the strobe. You can just have the lighting rig, the weight and the lighting rig. Um, if you put the weight in black or something like that, you can have it, you know, fairly low vis. You don't have to, you know, it doesn't have to be bright green to stand out, but I wanted it to stand out. Um, that's cool. Um, that's only one slot. One slot to add that lighting rig onto any tractor you want. Now, downside. Realistically, though, if you want to use your tractor with and you want to use the front three point link for doing various different jobs obviously the th front three point link is then taken up by the weight so that could be an issue i don't see any reason at all though why let's just turn it off when you detach it it takes it all off you couldn't put it on the back and then with the same bit of fiddling around just swivel it around and adjust it how you want to so if you wanted to use the three front three point for something you absolutely could. It's just a case of then doing L1, R1, swinging the whole rig round. You can still get the lighting rig to face the way you want it to when you get it on top. So it will still work if you put it on the back. But there you go. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Something a bit different like that from North Modding Company. Um, yeah, interesting. Um let's do this now we might as well this is what i was talking about this 
This is the future of farming. We've got a hoverboard. A hoverboard. I said this out loud. My wife and my oldest daughter went, what? I, was like, I honestly don't know. This is by FS Modding. Now, you may laugh. You may think, really? Is that something we need? But just hear me out a second. I was watching Tom Pemberton's Farm Life a few episodes back. And I'm talking because I'm gradually working my way through. So this is probably two years ago, maybe three years ago. Um, not that I watched it, but it's from two or three years ago. And he went to help out at a local farm um, doing their milking of their cows in the morning. Their head dairy woman that runs the dairy used a hoverboard for milking the cows in the morning because they had such a big dairy section. The cows were coming in. She went up and down the rows sorting the cows out on a hoverboard. So you think, actually, I mean, I know, I'm not going to hook a cedar up to that or uh, go out and do any spraying or anything like that, but... But what I love is this. Look, get on it. We don't have third person on console, but you can get third person. Start the engine, and off we go. Up to 12 miles an hour. Like I say, you can't hook a trailer up to it, but does it have lights? It does have lights. <laughs> I didn't even notice that before. How bonkers is that? I mean, it's not. It's fantastic, but I don't know. You know it's one of those things where we go, why do we need that? well because you can have a hoverboard display team if you want to you can write things on the ground if you want to <laughs> there you go just didn't they? um i know it's a crazy thing it's a bit quirky something a bit different um i don't know i quite like it uh you'll find this under vehicles let's just i'm gonna start actually um under vehicles where am i going under vehicles under miscellaneous it is fairly miscellaneous, let's be honest. It's not that expensive either. Um, 10 horsepower. Pops out the ground like magic. Uh, pick anything on there. We do have a lot of options. We've got uh, the top, we've got Challenger Yellow and Orange Metallic. But you've got um, Metallics, Mattes and Satins across the top. Then you've got some other different colours across the bottom. Old colours and new colours. I went for the gold just because, you know, if you're going to have a hoverboard on your farm, might as well bling it up. But, um, yeah... It's a crazy world. So buying it, total price, if you go for a different colour, 900 That's all. I can see myself hoverboarding around a lot more on my farm now. If only I could put a front weight and have that light rig on this as well, that would be amazing. Anyway, that's the hoverboard by FS Modding. I told you, you won't forget where you were when you saw this mod for the first time. So, actually I need to turn the lights off. And jump off which brings me on to the last of the mods for today and it's this um this is the if i get it right where have i lost it the flegal timber runner z crane pack this is by hajuho it's hajuho yeah hajuho and mr force technic um there are two in this pack we've got an eps cab crane and an open crane um it's um a Z crane because it folds into a Z if you want to have it in a Z. The trailer itself has um, a few bunk configurations that you can do on the fly. Now I did try to get into this once this is opened up and you've got the support legs open for the crane. Um, I tried to get into that but it wouldn't let me enter the crane unless the lorry was attached and you do it from the, the camera unfortunately. Uh, it does have tension belts across the whole thing. I, th I went for mint bit of a minty green there bit of a nod to jimmy broadbent there um but i thought i'd go minty why not this you'll find under um forestry under tools forestry equipment and like i say we've got the uh timber on a z crane with seat and then you've got the z crane with eps cab both 28 grand they're 18 slots each either one you go for um, options available we can change the main color like so which changes the bottom of the bunks uh, we can change the rim color polished metal chrome dark uh, and man red old green beige we've got pinks in there there's all sorts of colors you can go for really bright kind of it's not a John Deere yellow it's beyond John Deere yellow it's almost like a zombie apocalypse type sort of um, and then design colour changes the crane colour, so if you want to go for like minty on the crane, or if you want to go for something that stands out a bit more in the context of that United Colours of Benetton that I'm doing there. Um, we've got the option for Lizard and Nokian tyres. 
and then it says wheel setup now this I couldn't see any difference I did try and have a look as I was doing it um, it says normal or Lenkung I honestly couldn't see any difference at all between the two and I did it on Nokian and Lizard I thought maybe it was like double ties to a wide but it didn't do anything so I'm not sure what that does uh, but then we've got on the actual crane itself we've got log wood support long wood support sorry no or yes so if you are using the crane you've got long logs and you want to support them against the crane itself you've got a log support um, I don't know if that's a strap actually I didn't I didn't actually get one of those um, mud flap on the back we can have nothing we can have signs we can have with Mr Force Technic on the back stay at home or play a part together those are your options on the trailer and then the Timber Runner Z Crane Eps is exactly the same all the same options so what we'll do is grab the lorry we'll hook up I moved all the way out of the way for the thumbnail but should have um... there we go so if I fold that away that puts the EPS cab bit down, puts the supports away. The crane I would have to do manually, it doesn't do that manually, I'd have to lift that and move myself. And then put the crane inside, like so. Tension belts can be done from in the cab or out of cab manually if you want to do it like that. Um, so, options available on this. I'm going to open the help window, as I often do. Um, crane options are pretty much as crane options are L1 and right stick up and down we'll go up and down side to side we'll go side to side on my crane I do want to unfold the trailer first so I get some support so L1 and X opens up the supports just gives you a bit more stability and a better view with the crane if you do go into the cab um, so we're up and down then my right one and my right stick does that part of the, the boom and we can go in and out like so so we get a much longer reach on it then L1 and R1 gives me more rotation of the head and opening and closing of the head like so. Now I can go in cab into the crane so when I'm moving it around that's actually a nice view that I like that would help if I didn't damage it or we can go again and we can go out to the crane itself and just go from the boom if we want to go from the boom and that's nice and close in if you're going to be doing a bit of uh, log manipulation, so to speak. Uh, now, if we go to open cover, L1 and side on the D-pad changes where the bunks are positioned. So the first one does it that way, puts all the bunks together. So it depends on the length of the logs. Um, you don't have to have them, and it's easier for loading. If I do it again... Or there was another setting I thought open next cover oh there we go it's going again so there's a few options it just shuffles them all around a little bit moves three up one way three the other so every time you press um, L1 and left on the d-pad you get a slightly different configuration I think there are four and it takes you back three or four different settings and it takes you back to the original setting you had them in when you first got it um, that's it that's the I mean in essence that's it that's what it does those are your options that's how you do it that's the camera angles let's turn that off and that's it for the mods for today um, I'm going to jump onto my uh, hoverboard and do a bit more practicing ready for the display team start the engine um, I hope you found this useful and informative in some way shape or form if you have Give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do thanks for watching <laughs>